let's talk about context actions. This is a context action. Walking simulators and narrative adventure games are full of these because they don't really have any gameplay. So the level has to be full of activities like click on a door to open the door, click on a picture to steal the picture, that sort of stuff. In order to do these, it's a little bit more involved than ordinary actions. Like if I want this building to explode because I step into a trigger volume, I just have to tell the trigger volume to explode the building. Sure, it might take me a week to do all the flame effects and stuff, but it's just one line. I just have to point the trigger volume at the explodey stuff. On the other hand, for this kind of context action, we have to be notified that we're allowed to do the context action, and then notified that we're not, and then actually allowed to do it when we click, if we've been notified that we're allowed to. To make matters worse, our context actions have to be for the context of the player, not the game. For example, I am staring at Chloe. I'm clearly trying to interact with Chloe, so when I click and she talks, it makes perfect sense. But a trigger volume doesn't know the direction I'm facing. I am clearly not trying to talk to Chloe. I'm facing directly away from her. But when I click, I still talk to her. I'm talking with my butt. Because of this, it's really important for context actions if you know what's in front of the camera. You need to know what the player is looking at in order to know what context they're in. So if you want the player to be able to open a door by clicking on the door, you have to know that they're pointing their face at the door. Fundamentally, this usually comes down to ray tracing, firing a laser beam out of your camera to see what it hits. However, for beginners, there is an easier way. There is a fairly easy way to set this up, and I thought I'd go over it. We're going to be using mouse events. So let's look at the level blueprint. This is how we do a normal setup as, as we've got it set up right now. This is Chloe. When we go into the trigger volume, Chloe's animation changes and we say that we're ready to click. When we leave the trigger volume, that inverts. We change your animation to reserved and we tell the player they're not allowed to click. If we are allowed to click and we click, we get Chloe's dialogue. This isn't a terrible setup for one-off activities, but it is bad because we don't want to use a trigger volume. We want to use Chloe. We want to be able to tell Chloe that if Chloe is clicked, Chloe should do something. And we already can. If we decide that we are going to, that's Kate Marsh. Let's grab Chloe. There we go. If we decide that we are going to add more stuff for Chloe, we can come down here and add mouse event on begin cursor over. Hook it up and unhook that. And then we can do mouse event on end cursor over. Hook it up and unhook that. And then over here, we can unhook this and use mouse clicked. And this is only going to fire when Chloe specifically gets clicked. Some of this logic no longer makes much sense, but that's fine for now. The whole point here is we want to replace all of the stuff that we've been doing with trigger volumes with stuff that just works with the objects in question. Now the problem with this is that mouse events are pretty stuffy they're controlled very tightly by Unreal. So there are some hoops you have to jump through in order to enable them. Let's go over it. You're going to need to know what a game mode is, if you haven't yet. Um, you don't need any special game mode, but you do need your own game mode because you need your own player controller. In this case, I've got a player controller called New Player Controller. You can create one yourself. It's really, really straightforward. And what's in this new player controller? Well, the most important thing to put in the new player controller, let's go ahead and create another new player controller so you can see. The most important thing about this is we've got to turn on all of these mouse events. We don't need the touch event. 
We're also going to want to reduce the trace distance from a kilometer down to maybe three meters. So that means that this will now have a mouse that shows up. And there it is. See, I got a mouse. Previously, when I clicked in this window, the mouse would go away. Now I can't easily control my heading while this mouse is moving around because the actions are a little bit different. We'll get around to that. This is temporary, right? So if we go over to Chloe, see how it's not popping up? We're not getting the standard pop-up, but when we mouse over her, she turns to look at us. And I can click. So you can see it really is that easy to set Chloe up with some reactions. All we have to do is go into the level blueprint and hook up her mouse events so that she'll respond to the mouse. The hard part is turning the mouse back off. And this is what I'm here to talk about. If you've ever tried to do this and gotten really annoyed, I'm going to show you the secret. And I'm going to do that by switching back over to the other new player controller, which already has the code on it. So what is the setup? Well, first things first, you have to center the mouse every frame, which is annoying, but there's no way to lock it to the center of the frame. So if we were to go over to our new player controller here, you can see that on every tick, we set the mouse position to the center of the viewport. The problem is, this actually causes the mouse to display, and you can't make it not display. If you've ever watched a video and they've ended the video with the mouse going in the center of the screen, that's because they couldn't figure out how to turn the mouse back off. That's actually not too challenging. All you do is this does nothing, but you can change the default mouse cursor to none. That works great. It re-engages your ability to control your character directly, and the mouse cursor will never just suddenly pop into existence. The other trick here is, during begin play, you're going to want to set the input mode to game only, using this node here. Now the reason for this is because if you don't, then it's going to try and interpret our attempts to set the mouse position as a uh, input events on the UI layer, which will result in jittery motion. I don't know if you can see that on YouTube, but there is some jitteriness to this mouse. I'm no longer spinning smoothly. Good news, if you go ahead and set the input mode to, to game only during event begin play, you won't have that problem. That said, if you plan to use inputs later, UI elements later, you're going to have to remember to switch this. As I said, this is something that's good to get started, but you may want to replace it with a full featured, uh, you know, ray casting solution as time goes on. And now you can see that there's no jitter anymore. Maybe you can't see that. It might be hard to tell on YouTube. Well, that was tough, wasn't it? Yep, we've switched these characters both over to using mouse events. All we had to do was uh, turn on the mouse and then turn it back off. <laughs> I do want to note from a construction perspective, this setup where we take events from the individual characters in the scene, this is definitely a, um, a prototyping approach. In the long run, what you would do is you would set up a specific kind of actor that was capable of talking, and it would handle most of this stuff on its own, rather than being here in the blueprint. Uh, for example, rather than having every single door show up in your level blueprint, you would just have a door class, which understands when it's being highlighted and when it's being opened and how to open itself. But for the sake of what we're trying to do, this is fine. All we really needed to do was to be able to click on stuff, and we can. It's just this easy. Wow, it took me two days to figure out how to do this, and less than ten minutes to tell you how. I feel like I must be overlooking something. If I forgot something, let me know. We'll talk about it.